Now that we have discussed the microscopic constants of coal, let us have a look at the proximate analysis of coal. This is a very simple process but an important one and it uh, is used for the geochemical characterization of the coal. So, as we all are aware that the coal is a mixture of organic compound with moisture and inorganic mineral matter. And when we talk about the chemical constituents, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, they are principal constituents while nitrogen and sulfur are present in smaller amounts. Now, when we look at the change from vegetal material to the highest rank of coal, then this is how the variation in carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen is there. So, wood consists of 50, all, so the, all these are average values. So, from wood to anthracite, you can see how the carbon values, they are increasing. Hydrogen value, it decreases. Oxygen value decreases. While nitrogen is, of course, very small in quantity. So, if you look at this diagram over here, this is the increasing rank of coal from wood to the anthracite. The blue color, it represents carbon and here it is the percentage. So, here you can see there is a marked increase in carbon percentage and we all are aware that the four uh, types of coal that is the uh, uh, not four, actually three types of coal, lignite, bituminous and anthracite, they are all distinguished on the basis of the carbon content. Okay. So, carbon is the chief constituent of coal, which increases with the rank of coal. Oxygen decreases with the increasing rank of coal. So, here you can see this gray color one. So, this is oxygen. There is a complete decline in the oxygen content. Hydrogen combines with carbon means this is not hydrocarbon rather it is it's not hydrogen it will be hydrocarbon so hydrogen combines with carbon to give hydrocarbon which forms the combustible matter of the coal so we all are aware that uh, uh, compounds like methane ethane butane and several complex long chain compound these are called as hydrocarbons and they form the combustible matter of the coal so even hydrogen also decreases in a, in its content as the rank of coal increases so we can see here that the anthracite which consists of the uh, highest content of carbon is the uh, most uh, advanced or the highest rank of the coal so, when we do the proximate analysis of coal, it is a quick and general method of geochemical characterization. It does not require very uh, sophisticated instruments. It includes the determination of moisture, volatile matter, fixed carbon and ash content. These are four important constituents of uh, the coal which can be determined using the proximate analysis. As I had told, these do not require very sophisticated instruments. Rather, we use muffle furnace, laboratory oven, microbalance, silica crucibles. Apart from it, we also use sieve sets, sieves for grind, uh, for you know, um, separating, separating coal powder after grinding. after grinding that is all okay so this is widely used for industrial purpose and also for grading of the coals by using these values we can grade the coal as coking coal or non-coking coal and we can also calculate the useful heat values on the basis of which the uh, industries which use coal may uh, decide which type of coal they need to use the so moisture Moisture is of two types, free moisture and hydroscopic moisture. Now, 
free moisture is the simple moisture when the coal comes in contact with water in the coal seam or in the washery so when the coals they are extracted from the seam they are sent to the washeries and then jet of water which is thrown over the coal it uh, it it is in the contact of coal and it is called as the free moisture hydroscopic moisture is the one which is absorbed by the coal particularly low rank coal like lignite lignite so the moisture absorbed by the coal is dependent on the humidity and temperature of the surrounding atmosphere okay so uh, normally when such proximate analysis are done then the coal are uh, they need to be kept in moisture free environment or once they are being dried they need to be dried in a desiccator so that they don't absorb the atmospheric moisture present in that surrounding atmosphere so this sample is air dried now what do we do we first crush the coal we crush the coal and then we pass through sieve sets to get a size fraction of 212 microns so we use this size 212 microns for the proximate analysis so for the determination of inherent moisture 1 gram of air dried coal of uh, ground to the 212 micron size is taken in silica crucible and heated heated at a temperature of 108 degrees celsius in an oven a uh, time almost 45 minutes now what do we do let us say for example we took 1 gram of coal we kept it in a silica crucible this coal powder and then heated after heating we weighed the sample again and then we found that the weight comes out to be 0.7 grams so essentially the moisture was 0.3 grams or the coal sample had 30% moisture that is how it is done so moisture weight and remember all these uh, values are represented in weight percent so this is the formula weight of coal powder before heating weight of residue after heating divided by the weight of coal powder into 100 so then we so this is the example say so for example we got 1 gram of coal and after heating the residue was of 0.7 gram it means the coal had around 30% moisture so low rank coals they have moisture greater than 20% whereas low rank coal means the lignite and sub bituminous whereas the highest rank coal like anthracite moisture content is hardly 1 to 2% this moisture is mostly unwanted you know uh, the uh, industries which use these coals they don't want this moisture because what it does once this coal is being heated to burn it chills the fire that that extra moisture and then it causes the uh, generation of lot of smoke that is why this is a unwanted moisture so this is how you can calculate moisture weight percent next is the volatile matter now we all are aware that the volatile matter Mm. Uh, it consists of all those uh, constituents which are which can be uh, which can escape the substance like the different types of gases or different types of uh, uh, substances which can break down on heating so what happens over here is that we uh, use this 1 uh, gram of air dried coal to heat in a muffle furnace now at 900 degrees celsius for 7 minutes and then we calculate the loss in weight percentage but remember that even moisture is also a type of volatile matter so to get the true volatile matter other than moisture what we need to do is that weight of coal powder minus weight of residue after heating divided by weight of coal powder into 100 so this this fraction it gives us the total volatile matter and once we subtract moisture from it we get the uh actual volatile matter so the volatile matter is taken as the measure of the rank of coal lower ranks may contain more than 50% volatile matter while the anthracites may have less than 10% of volatile matter content in them this these could include different gases of nitrogen sulfur etc okay so uh, don't forget to deduct the moisture content from the uh, volatile matter obtained in the uh, volatile matter determination process 
Next is the ash content. Previously, I had told you about the mineral matter of the uh, coal, mineral content of the coal. So, ash is obtained by the complete combustion of the inorganic mineral matter of the coal. It is of two types. You all are aware that the mineral matter, the, it is either syngenetic or epigenetic. So, the inherent mineral matter which is associated intimately with the coal is syngenetic. And this syngenetic material, it was partly derived from the uh, weathering processes that is partly terrigenous and then if you remember there was some inorganic mineral matter derived from the peat forming plant communities okay so this is the uh, this is one type of mineral matter second one which we called as adventitious mineral matter is the epigenetic one so it is deposited after the coal is formed in the cracks cleats or uh, fissures through the percolating water now due to combustion the water of hydration, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide are driven off from the mineral matter. So, the ash is roughly 10% of the original mineral matter. Just remember this, that to get the ash, you need to burn the coal. While burning is going on, the water, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, they escape the coal. So, whatever is left, whatever is left over there, it is just the 10% of the original mineral matter. So, what do we do? How to determine it? 1 gram of air dried coal of uh, 212 micron size placed in silica crucible and left uncovered. So, while we were doing the volatile matter content, we need to cover it with a lid. Otherwise, it will burn the coal. While if we are doing ash, we need to completely burn the coal. So, we leave it uncovered in a muffler furnace raise the temperature to 500 degrees celsius in 30 minutes and then gradually to 815 in the next 30 to 60 minutes so this is, there is a gradual increase because once we uh, increase the temperature of the furnace slowly then there are different types of uh, these mineral matter which break in steps at different temperature so once we reach this temperature of 815 degrees celsius it needs to be maintained for one hour then the uh, silica crucible is placed in the desiccator and then residue is weighed. So, ash content is represented as the weight percent, which we can see over here. Weight of the residue after heating upon weight of the coal powder multiplied by 100. This gives us the uh, ash weight percent. And then next comes the fixed carbon. So, remember that fixed carbon cannot be determined by an experiment. Rather, fixed carbon is calculated so it is weight upon weight loss upon combustion of a devolatilized coal sample means all the volatile material content has been removed so it may be defined as the solid combustible residue remaining after expulsion of volatile matter and remember fixed carbon is not the same as the uh, carbon content of a coal so you may find that a certain rank of the coal, let us say anthracite, which was showing to be having 90% carbon content, may not have exactly 90% as the fixed carbon content. So, it is not determined, it is rather estimated. So, fixed carbon is you subtract moisture, volatile matter, and ash from 100, you get the fixed carbon weight percent very simple so you need to calculate these three moisture weight percent and sorry uh, volatile matter and ash content by doing the uh, experiment while fixed carbon can be calculated by simply subtracting all these three values from 100 now all these three uh, moisture weight percent ash uh, weight percent moisture volatile matter ash and fixed carbon they have been calculated on air dried basis means the powder was simply left in air to dry under a controlled environment which had uh, 60 uh, you know 40 degree celsius temperature and 60 percent humidity now being after being air dried there, there are two more ways to calculate the volatile matter the ash dry ash free or dry mineral matter free basis so these are called as daf or dmmf also known as pure coal basis. So, pure coal is obtained after deducting the moisture and ash content from the coal. Okay. So, uh, if we uh, subtract the ash content, 
and the moisture content then what whatever is left behind is the pure coal so volatile matter content on dry ash free basis can be calculated as volatile matter which we had determined previously multiplied by 100 upon 100 minus uh, moisture plus ash because this moisture and ash what do they do is that they uh, once uh, they, they are kind of impurities so what we now get is that of the pure coal while once we do the uh, dry mineral matter free basis so ash content is as i had told you that once the water of hydration is removed then whatever is left behind is the ash content so ash content is mineral matter minus water of hydration so ash percent is calculated by multiplying uh, so the ash percent is multiplied by 1.1 to calculate the total mineral matter so volatile matter weight percent dry mineral matter free basis can be calculated by volatile matter air dried multiplied by 100 upon 100 minus moisture plus 1.1 multiplied by ash so these values have been determined by uh, the various studies which have been conducted regarding the approximate analysis so this is how you can calculate the volatile matter air dried volatile matter dry ash free basis and volatile matter dry mineral matter free basis this is all about the uh, approximate constituents of the coal so try to do this exercise that these seven samples are given their moisture ash and volatile matter values were calculated individually for each of them so using the previous formula which i have been given calculate the fixed carbon and volatile matter daf and dmmf basis for each sample and then also calculate the mean values for each sample so as i have told previously that the proximate constituents are used for the grading of the coal so another important thing was the useful heat value uhv is also known as useful heat value so you can this is how it can be calculated 8900 minus 138 into weight percent of ash plus weight percent of moisture this is how it you can calculate the useful heat value so using this formula and the exercise for you using this formula and the data from this slide you know data from this slide calculate the useful heat value for each sample also calculate the mean uhv try to attempt these two exercises this one exercise one and exercise two and uh, report their answer in the comment section we shall come up with the next topic about the uh, age of the coal and then Gond differences between the gondwana coal carboniferous coal and permian coal in the next lecture that is all for today